Hey there, everybody. I'm Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of Playing Solo Jazz Piano. And um, in a lot of my recent YouTube videos, people have been asking in the comments, where are you getting some of these chords that you're adding in to tunes? How do you get used to adding chords? How do you come up with these chords? And I want to go over that. And it is actually covered in chapter 16 of this book. Um, but for those of you who own the book, hopefully this live demonstration will, live demonstration will kind of complement it. Uh, and for those of you who don't own the book, of course, you should get it. Um, but uh, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an introduction. So um, we are going to look at about three ways. Some of them are kind of similar that you can add chords. There's many, many uh, possibilities, but we're gonna start with kind of three basic ways. So let's start with, you know, let's just pretend like we have a C major seven, uh, and let's just say that it lasts for two measures, just to make life easy. I'm not writing <laughs> where. Those are really bad slashes. Those look like a first grader did them, I'm sorry. <laughs> Art is not my strong point. So uh, <laughs> the first thing that you could do is you can always add in basically a five to one. And when I say five to one, I'm not referring to the overall key, I'm referring to whatever the chord is at the moment. So here I've got C major for two measures. I'm gonna treat this C major as the one chord. And if you guys are good musicians, you know that the five of C major is a G dominant. Okay, so one thing we could do is we could create a little motion, add in that G dominant for two beats and return to C major. And this is one of the fun things about doing this kind of reharmonization is that we get to decide where we're gonna put it. It could be that we go to the G7, uh, sorry, we go to the G7 on beat two and return to the C major on beat three, you know, or we could go to the G7 on beat four and then return to C major seven on beat one. Okay, but in any of those cases, we do this all the time as jazz players. If you're not used to doing this, this is really an essential part of really any kind of jazz repertoire. So just adding in the dominant. And then for, um, I'm gonna call it 1A, so I told you that some of these things are kind of related and overlap, is that we're gonna use the tritone sub of the five chord, right? If you guys aren't familiar with this concept of the tritone sub, I know many of you are, um, but basically for any dominant chord, you can substitute the dominant chord with the root, a tritone, or we sometimes say a uh, diminished fifth or augmented fourth away. So for a G7, we could instead use a D flat set. Okay, so I'm substituting in the five and then I'm substituting for that. It's kind of like a double switch. Um, another way that you can think about it is you're just going a half step up and taking the dominant chord. Um, but thinking of it as the tritone sub of the five, this is kind of another way, uh, or this is really the theoretical justification, I should say, for why this works. So here, uh, this D flat seven is the tritone sub of the five. And this sounds very similar. It's a little more colorful though than the G7. Versus here is the G7. You notice that so far, these substitutions, which are probably the most common substitution, are both dominant chords. And there's a reason why we use dominant chords so much. First of all, they create tension, right? They create movement because dominant chords need to be resolved. But secondly, we can always add altered tones to dominant chords. So if we're reharmonizing a melody, we have a lot more notes that are gonna match a dominant chord because we can use the natural fifth and the natural ninth or the flat fifth, the sharp fifth, the flat ninth, the sharp ninth. Um, you know, those, any of those notes could be in the melody. So you've got a ton of possibilities when you get to dominant chords. Before we move on, I actually just wanna show you um, that you don't have to only use this device once. What we could do is we could use this G7. Okay, so that's the five of one. Okay, I'm, I'm backtracking to number one instead of one A. We're doing just a little five one. And then we could put the five of that in front of it. So it's almost like we're reharming the reharm or we're adding chords to the added chords. And then we could put a five in front of that if we wanted to. And in fact, we could combine these two devices. Let's say we have a G7 here. 
instead of going to a D7, we can go to the tritone sub of that. We can go to an A flat chord. And now we're creating more and more colorful progressions. Right. So we can take the five of the A flat seven, which is E flat. I'm going to show, show you guys how this all works in a tune uh, later in the uh, video. Um, okay, so we're using the five, the tritone sub of the five. Let me show you one other thing is that, you know, so far we've started on the C, gone to the five chord, come back to the C. Even if C is written here on beat one, we could actually delay that. We could start on a G7 for two beats. We actually do this a lot. We delay resolutions in jazz. So it's not necessarily that you have to start, go away, come back. Sometimes you can delay that resolution. All right, so so far we've got the five, we've got the tritone sub of the five. Um, and I'm gonna give this a new number even though this probably could be one B. Um, but uh, I'm gonna call it number two, which is that we can add a two five or even further, we could go kind of all the way to a three six two five. Another way of saying this, uh, which I call, which is a language I use in the book, is this is the diatonic circle of fifths. So the diatonic circle of fifths means that you're, you're choosing only notes from C major or whatever your key happens to be. And you kind of have to cheat around the circle of fifths. You go from C to F, but then you have to have a diminished fifth for this next one. And you go to B half diminished, then an E minor. A minor, D minor, G7, C. Um, if you ever heard the tune, I will survive. This is the diatonic circle of fifths, basically. It gets a little complicated here because it's going to A minor. Okay, um, getting distracted. So um, instead of just adding a five chord, we can add chords from the diatonic circle of fifths. We could add a 2-5-1 or, you know, a 6-2-5-1 in here. So that instead of just hanging out on this C major chord um, forever, we were adding and adding and adding movement. And if we wanted to keep going, we could replace this C major chord. And again, we're kind of delaying the resolution. And now we have a 3-6-2-5. Occasionally, you might want to go beyond the three, but in my experience, it's kind of rare. Um, to go further than that in the diatonic circle of fifths. I'm not sure that that's going to really be your best use of time, but hey, you explore it, let me know. <laughs> I don't think it's impossible, um, but I just, I'm not sure that that's going to happen all the time. Okay, so that's the diatonic circle of fifths, um, keys that are all at home, or sorry, chords that are all at home in the key of C major. I'm going to give you one more here, and this is, a, this is an important one. Maybe I'll give you two more. I might be feeling generous today. Um, Sidestepping is number three. So what sidestepping means to me is that you're taking a chord, or sometimes we even take a group of chords and we sidestep with them, um, and you're moving them by a half step. It could be a half step below, it could be a half step above, um, but here you're maintaining the quality of the chord. So for a C major, we could sidestep to D flat major and then back. Okay, so we're just ornamenting the chords that are here, right? We could sidestep to B major and then back. That's gonna be kind of a crazy sounding progression. It's gonna be a lot of information. Now here we're getting to chords that both aren't dominant chords and aren't part of the home key. So it's gonna be a little bit rarer that this matches your melody incredibly well because notes in C major probably aren't gonna match a D flat major chord and a B major chord. But you still wanna watch out for it. This is a really useful um, you know, technique. And if I'm playing a rubato ballad or if I'm, uh, play, if I'm doing a very quick ornament of a chord, then I'm using sidestepping all the time because I'm just literally moving each note by a half step. Um, so by the way, uh, what I have written here sounds like this. And I 
told you I'd give a fourth, give you a fourth one. It's probably not going to come up in our example, though. You know, maybe we'll find somewhere where we can use it. And uh, this one's called planing. This is a little bit more of a modern device. You know, I associate it with pianists like Herbie Hancock and Chick Corea. Um, that might not be exactly right. I'm sure it predates them. Um, but this basically means that however the melody is moving, you're going to follow that interval structure. So here I'm going to have to write in a little bit of a melody for the demonstration. So let's say we're going. Um, this is kind of a silly example, but you know, work with what you got. So here I'm starting with the root on C on C major seven. And so I'm going to basically follow the same intervallic structure as the melody so that each melody note gets harmonized as the root of a major seventh chord. And so now we get these very parallel chords. Um, I don't really recommend using it for the root that much. It's not the most uh, rich note. But again, I'm moving the same exact voicing. That's what planing really means, is taking a shape and then moving that shape exactly along with the melody. So those are our four and a half <laughs> ways. Um, I'm just going to review over on the side here. I'm going to have to write really small with this camera angle. Actually, no, we're going to go to the full iPad view. So the first thing is creating little mini 5-1 progressions. One A would be using the tritone sub of the five. Oh, geez, did I forget what number two is? I feel like I'm not doing well. What's number two? <laughs> uh, you could also create two five or bigger diatonic circle of fifths progression. Number three was sidestepping, meaning that you're taking the chord, including the quality, and you're moving it out and back by a half step. And then number four uh, was planning, which we're probably going to see the least of, um, but in those times that you can use it, uh, it's golden. So let's look at an example of how this might actually work. So here's a nice tune called Out of Nowhere. I'll play the first eight bars or so. device number one. So remember device number one was creating a 5-1. We've got all this nice space in this G major 7. We've got two measures for G major 7. So let's just go ahead, let's put a D7 here and come back to G major right here. Beautiful. And remember how I showed you that you could create a little chain of these? So instead of just D7, let's put D7 on beat 4. And I'll put A7 in front of it. Cool. I like it. Uh, let's see. You know, if we really wanted to go buck wild, we could add four dominant chords. I don't think this is going to sound amazing, but I don't quite know until I play it. So again, this is just, we're going through the circle of fifths with dominance. this a little bit and if we want to use one B that's easy enough so instead of the D7 here we're gonna use an A flat 7 and notice that we have the flat 9 in the melody but it's a dominant chord so we can just add a flat 9 that's no problem beautiful love it and it's a little bit more colorful like I told you right it's that melody note is just the fifth of the D7, whereas it's the flat nine, as we talked about, of the A flat. Um, you know, a lot of these substitutions are so simple 
um, that you wouldn't even, I don't think of them as, as you know, reharmonizing. But, you know, let's just take this little progression here. I could add a B flat seven leading in to this E flat. So it's just, this is device number one. It's a five to one. Okay, so I just changed it slightly from B flat minor to a B flat seven. You know, or if I wanted to use one B, I could make it an E7, and in this case, the melody is the flat ninth, so we're gonna have to lower the ninth. Pretty nice. And it's actually fun, you can use one and one B together. So I'm gonna do B flat seven, and then the E7, so you're doing the five, and then the tritone sub. So uh, just with one and one B, we're creating a lot of possibilities. And notice, um, you know, here, now I'm not doing a substitution after the fact. I'm actually leading in to this chord. And that's what, you know, these sorts of reharmonizations are, are we're targeting something, we're aiming for something, we're leading into something. Um, and uh, so it could be that you're kind of reestablishing something that's happened, or it could be that you're leading into the next chord probably more often you're actually leading into the next chord. Let's just try one more thing, which is that we could get rid of this B flat minor seven altogether. And we could just do, let's do E seven. And we could do that because the E seven leads. We're aiming for that E flat. So. going to be naughty. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, since we have that E7, we can make it a little 2-5, and I think I'm going to like this. Um, and then we can make this guy a 2-5. Hey, I sound like Hank Jones now. Great. <laughs> um, all right, uh, back to a regularly scheduled program. Just got excited about a chord progression there. Um, okay, so those are, that's using one and one B, right? Dominant chord, tritone sub for a dominant chord. Now we can do these same things, uh, add things in the same way uh, with number two, which is adding diaton chords from the diatonic circle of fifths. So, you know, an easy way to do this would be A minor seven to D seven to G major seven here. So again, we're kind of reestablishing this chord. Um, so that works nicely. Let's see if we want to go, could we go further than that? Um, we could go back E minor seven. And we could even get rid of this G major and put a B minor seven here. This is going to really change the character of the tune. So I'm not sure if we're into it. It's not my favorite. Um, but you know, it's within the realm of possibility, I think. One of the things that you can notice here is that, um, you know, I can create whatever harmonic rhythm I like. I can do this in quarter notes, in half notes, in whole notes. I could, if I wanted, I could go, uh, you know, that sounds like crap because I didn't plan it out at all. But you know, all those sorts of things are possible. Um, let's see, could we, we could kind of fake a two, five, one here. I say fake because this is an E natural, so it doesn't technically match that uh, F7 chord, right? The F7 has an E flat as the seven. Um, but I can make it work. <laughs> I'm a semi-professional. Um, so here we're targeting B flat. delaying the melody so it didn't come all together. I quite like that. You know, we could, to my previous point, we could make these both last a half note instead. And now, check that out with 
this is about to happen. So this is device number two, right? We're doing the diatonic circle of fifths leading into B flat. But now I'm gonna use device number one to lead into the C minor. I'm gonna do a five one to the C minor. You know, or I could do one B and use a D flat seven. It would have to have a sharp five or flat 13, however you wanna call it. <laughs> whatever you guys think is great um, and you know let's just take this progression so this is a 2-5 but if we wanted to make it more of a diatonic circle of fifths this is a 2-5 in the key of A flat right E flat minor to E flat 7 is in the key of A flat it certainly does not resolve there at all the chord progression comes from out of nowhere hence the name of the tune um, but we could do a 3-6-2-5 in A flat instead of just a 2 5. So uh, we're using that same principle, the diatonic circle of fifths. Think of that way you will. And same thing here, this progression is in A, it's a little hard to say if it's A major or A minor exactly. It resolves to A minor, but it's more of a major 2 5. So again, we could replace it with a 3 6 2 5. comes in uh, right on the beat, which is a very colorful note choice. Okay, so those are some ways that you can use device number two. Okay, let's see. Uh, so we're on to device number three, which is side stepping. Remember, that's where you go up or down by a half step. So uh, this isn't my favorite spot, but let's check it out with this G major. So uh, if I'm going to sidestep up, I need something that works with this A flat major 7. This G natural works with the A flat major 7. So I'm going to kind of force this to work. It's not the greatest in terms of harmonic rhythm. <laughs> and that totally gives away the B flat minor 7 to E flat. So I'd never do that. I like it for that one moment though. I think it's actually kind of nice. Um, it's a little hard to fit in some of these side steps. Here's a beautiful place to use a side step. So looking down here now, A minor is going to go to B flat minor. And here it's actually kind of more of a passing chord because we're going to just land on this B half diminished. Um, I, if I wanted to really play that as a side step, I could go... It takes a little bit of extra time to really make that work. Um, so that would have been just A minor to B flat minor and then back to A minor. Another beautiful place for a sidestep, and actually uh, this is going to overlap as we talk about planing, but um, going into this B minor 7, we could use a, did I say it wrong? Going into this B flat minor 7, we could use a B minor 7 right there to set it up. And in fact, I could probably use that for two whole beats because we have a D and an E in the melody. So let's, let's see what that sounds like. So now it's sidestepping into that B flat minor seven. Nothing fancy, but nice. Um, let's try, we're gonna do a double sidestep now. So I have this B minor, it's gonna be on beat four, and then I'm gonna add a C minor. So I'm sidestepping into the B, sidestepping into the B flat, a chain of sidesteps. Steps, they're always going to be beautiful resolutions because everything in the chord is resolving by a half step. So everything resolves. Um, it's not, not really, you know, it's not rocket science. Um, so that's really nice. Or we could stretch these over two beats. Do you see how many possibilities there are here? It's just kind of fun to play around, you know, with these four simple tricks and just get your hands dirty. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, and just for just for kicks, because we're sidestepping, let's add a bunch. Not tasteful, but it works. Okay, so here I've been aiming for the uh, B flat minor, the 
the entire time. Um, let's try just aiming for this E flat seven. And what you're gonna see is that when you're dealing with dominant chords, the concept of sidestepping is going to overlap with one B, which is your kind of tritone sub for the dominant chord. So now we're gonna do F to E to E flat. So this is a sidestep from above, um, but it's also the same thing as the one B, the tritone sub for the dominant. <laughs> favorite I did also if you heard it I added a sidestep here so I just wanted a little bit more action um, we could sidestep going up um, so we could sidestep up and in that case it's not going to be the same as 1b it's going to be a little bit different so that sounds like this this is going to have to be a d7 sharp 9 I'm not mad about it. All right, and lastly, I want to show you planing, but you know what? Let me plug my book one more time. Please buy my book. Um, still or done? I don't know why. Can't be me. <laughs> uh, but I really appreciate every order, especially when they come in on my website. So here's how we're going to do some planing. We're going to be aiming for this B flat minor seven. And here, it's a minor seven chord, of course, and the fifth is in the melody. So for these previous two notes, I'm going to put the fifth in the melody of a minor chord. So I'm going to go G minor seven, A minor seven, and then B flat minor seven. Let's see how it sounds. Ooh, I like it. And then we can do the same thing here. And actually it's the same formula. The fifth is in the melody, so it's not really that exciting. So again, it would be G minor seven, A minor seven. So those melody notes don't change. But you know, let's include this G this time. We don't want the G to be left out. So there it will be a C minor seven. So here we go. Uh, I'm just gonna play the second line. Um, here's another place that we could use some planing. Um, and here it's, a little interesting because we want to target the long note. We're targeting kind of the resolution. So that resolution is going to be an E flat seven. It's the third of the chord. This is the same note. We're going to make this A the third of the chord. Ugh. <laughs> I don't. Maybe I could do it with a different voicing. going to sound really parallel. A lot of things moving in the same direction. So I hope that that gets you started with some ideas for reharmonization. Um, and uh, please subscribe to the channel, like, leave your comments. I love getting your comments. They keep me going when I don't feel like doing another video. And uh, check out the book on jeremysiskin.com shop. And uh, I'll see you all real soon.